there guys, this is me Malorian and today what I want to be talking about is abandoned warcasters. And what I mean by that is a warcaster or warlock that used to be very popular and used a lot in tournaments and competitive play and recently has kind of just like disappeared. Or maybe not even recently, maybe for quite a while now. Just like, oh yeah, nobody plays that caster anymore. And I think it's really important that this is something that you look at because this could be buried treasure really when it comes to gaming and something that you could be getting a lot of benefit from. Now, this kind of goes with some other uh, forms of uh, sharpening the saw when you're trying to improve your wargaming in that there should be a lot of times where what you're doing is reviewing these, the whole game as a whole and looking for ways to improve. But the big thing with abandoned warcasters is that you know something's there because there used to be something there. I mean, if I look and I'm trying to find some way to make Constance work, Constance is, uh, to my knowledge, I didn't play Mark 1, but I never know of a time that Constance was like, you know, the list to run and the warcaster. And she's in two factions and it still doesn't seem to ever work. So the odds of me finding something buried there is not as great. Whereas if I went to something that was popular at one time, well I know something worked there. And I think the big thing to remember with these, if you're going to take it to Caster, is say, okay, why was this Warcaster once so popular? And usually what this has to do is one of two things. One, there was a build or a play style that was very, very strong that is no longer viable because of a nerf or a change to how the Warcaster works. Or usually the other one is the fact that other casters have come up which are seemingly more powerful or more interesting or something like that. So let's start with one and then we'll go to the other case. In the first one where something was changed or nerfed. Now some of these cases are let's say things like Haley 2 or Gatsby 2 where they went through several nerfs where there's one time where they could be doing a lot of very powerful things and then PP scaled it back and then scaled it back and then scaled it back. Well, obviously with that, it, it is just plain old, yes, the caster is worse than it was before. Haley 2's feet. At one time, you got to control the whole army, they had to sacrifice their movement or their action, and you got to pick what order they went in. Fantastic. Scale back. Okay, now you can't pick the order, but at least they have to forfeit their movement or action. Scale back. Now it's not everything, now it's a random thing when you roll a dice. And the big thing is that you have to realize that every single time that scaled back, there was a group of people that said, ah, oh, that's it, she, she's just not good anymore, uh, we should be doing this other caster instead. And then it moves down again, ah, oh, no, that's it, that's the, that's the last draw, now she's not playable anymore. But you have to keep in mind that when that happened, she still really did a lot of all the things that she already did. And sure, those things moved down, but there's still a lot of play there. And there's still something where if you went and you worked with it, you could probably still make that work. Now, there's other times where it's not as straightforward and there's other pieces to it. So let's take now Nemo 3, where with Nemo 3, they didn't really change a lot of what Nemo 3 does. What they just really did is change the way that lightning worked and said that now when you go and you shoot your lightning, it can't electro leap off of things that are friendly and you can't go and uh, have things just being your own friendly models in the feet. It has to be the enemy models. Oh, just like the, all, all the other times, this is no good anymore. I want to be going somewhere else. When Really, when you look at it, it wasn't that big of a deal. The times that you needed to electro leap off of your own stuff isn't really all that common. And if you really have to, you can take something that's not lightning immune. Or the whole fact that you need your enemy to be in your, your control range, 
That's what almost every other caster does. You're not going to be in that much danger when you have to be within like 16 inches of the enemy. You're a far ways away, and meanwhile, you're shooting that target, whatever you were catching that feat, probably down with all the lightning, meaning that the enemy is even further than that. But still, it's just that feeling that people have that, geez, I've been nerfed, it's not worth playing anymore, that then they just completely abandon it. Then, you get some other casters where the change was kind of more pronounced. So let's take something like Darius, where Darius kind of did kind of a specific thing, and then he kind of really reworked the caster. And they also reworked other pieces as well. So, for example, the whole game change. So the whole idea before, where Darius could work, with his two steam, uh, st steam walls. Storm walls, well, all of a sudden now we have a game where there's more heavies, the storm walls are more points in comparison, uh, Darius doesn't do the same thing as he did before, <laughs> throw all those plans away, Darius is garbage, because that archetype of how you should be playing Darius is now gone. Well, my next video is gonna be talking about why Darius is still good, but you just gotta play him in a different way. And so those are two ways where where a caster was changed, there's still something there where the rules were really powerful, dialed back, but that pile that powerful play style is still there. It's just not as powerful as it was before. The other one is where the caster is now reworked, so that archetype, that way of playing is now really probably gone but there's now newer ways you can be playing with that caster and if they had a powerful toolkit tool before they probably have a very powerful toolkit now now the other one i talked about as well is the idea where you have a caster that really just falls out of popularity because other casters come in probably again a very good example of this would be Signar because they've had so many more new interesting casters that came out that then kind of just outshine in the limelight the other casters. You know, lately you have Haley 3 who comes out and it's like, wow, Haley 3 is amazing. Look at all she can do. And then you have Siege 2 comes out. Oh, wow, look at all the things that Siege 2 can do. Well, that's great. And you can play those two new casters, but the old casters that you used to play before they're still just as good. The fact that you found something nice and shiny is like, squirrel, and now you want to play that? Sure, that's cool, but you got to remember that those things that you played before are still good. So when you have a faction that you realize like, geez, everyone's playing the new caster. Still remember that all those old casters still do all the great things that they did before. Maybe one example would be also Legion. What are you seeing in Legion now? Animeg, Animeg, Animeg. Why? Because Animeg's really good. But what did people play before? They played some Haley 3. They played some... Uh, no, it's Haley 3. Oh my god, I'm thinking of one thing. We're saying the wrong thing. You, They played some Lilith 3. <laughs> you know, the one in the chariot. Not the one with the two sisters from the future and past that come to hang out with you. That one. You know, there's there's that one. Uh, there's Veil 2. You know, these casters that were played before didn't change or like Abby too never changed but all of a sudden everyone's playing animeg 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 and that's really it while well, these ones just kind of like put on the shelf like that's it I got my new shiny caster push aside but again nothing even changed with them they did very well before and they could do very well now now of course Times can change, there could be new things in the meta, and so something that was good before might not be as good now, because maybe now there's counters for it, maybe this list was really good at taking out infantry, and now there's a lot of jacks, or this list is really good at taking jacks, and now taking out uh, infantry. The big thing is, though, is that by definition, if the things flowed and made it so that now that other list was no longer good in the meta, as things change, that just means you need to be reevaluating those casters because there will be a time where they come back into the limelight again. And I think this is where you can really get into a dark horse type thing, which is kind of crazy because we're talking about casters that are not like unknown. They used to be extremely powerful, but it's just the fact that nobody really prepares for them anymore because they've fallen out of the limelight. And I think, again, a very good example of that could just be things like Nemo 3. P 
people used to be very prepared for Nemo 3. Oh, we got to be ready for it. You got to be ready for it. You need to have anti-lightning. You got to be able to space. You need to have incorporeal. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, the little change to Nemo 3. Now all of a sudden people are taking out their, their Nemo 3 counters. Well, that means you might be in a very good spot to be bringing back Nemo 3. They could be in a spot where like, oh damn, I, I know what your caster does, so it's not really a dark horse in that sense of the, the word. However, they're just not prepared for it. They don't have the things in their list to stop it. Or you might even get the full dark horse effect because man, I I don't even remember what this caster does. And then the next thing they know, the three has stationary their caster and they're shot and they're dead just like that. And Good for you, the game took a couple of minutes, and uh, it's all because you forgot that little three used to be a thing. So, all factions have this. Oh, okay. Maybe I shouldn't say all factions, but pretty much all factions that have been around for a long time and have a wealth of, of warcasters and warlocks will have these hidden gems, will have these abandoned warcasters that at one time were extremely popular and are no longer. And again, what I'm really saying to you is just take some time to now and then reevaluate those. I'm not saying this is something you should be doing as an exercise every single weekend or something like that. But, you know, now and again, you know, every few months or so, just say, geez, what were the lists that were really good, say, like a, a year ago? Why aren't we playing those anymore? And then maybe reevaluate those. The, the, in the cases where the caster is completely different, that's going to take a lot more of a mental exercise, but again, could be extremely worth it because there could be definitely some hidden gems there for you to be surprising your meta with it. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Please go out there and kind of check out your own hidden gems. If there's some that you kind of jump to your mind, please post them down, or maybe, maybe don't. You know, as much as I want to encourage you to go and comment, you might want to keep those secret until you can surprise your own side. But maybe we'll say that. If you go and find that hidden gem, find that abandoned warcaster, and you find some good success with it, well, maybe now that you've already surprised your own meta, maybe share the, the knowledge here so the rest of us can go and surprise our metas too. So anyway, there you have it. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later. Bye.